morning, everyone. God is good all the time. All participants are muted. Hallelujah. Amen. It's so good to be gathered with you this morning. It's Monday, and uh, it's a good day, the beginning of a good week. And uh, we're going to get, go ahead and get started here right away. I'm <clears throat> just waiting a couple of seconds uh, as folks are coming on the Facebook Live right now. Praise God. Amen. Michelle Bennett, Arlene, Arlene Rise and Shine from Florida. Hallelujah. Hilda Cuz, good to see that you're on board. Corey Mitchell, amen. God bless you guys this morning. Uh, a, little bit of, a little bit of craziness this morning, but God is so good. And I'm so glad you guys are on. Renee Rice, hallelujah. Good morning as well. And I hear folks coming on the conference call this morning. And... Um, I believe God has a word for every one of us here today, so I'm just very, very glad to be here. Uh, we had a great service yesterday at uh, New Life. It was really a, it was really a lot of, I don't know, I, I really enjoy this parking lot drive-in church. I think it's been a, a season that's been very di uh, different, but yet very powerful, and, and uh, new people are actually driving in. Uh, I talked to somebody yesterday who actually... Um, was just driving by and saw the sign and saw the church, uh, all the cars inside. And they just pulled right in and they said, man, they enjoyed themselves so much. They're coming back next week as well. So I guess maybe taking the church outside the four walls. You know, we always talk about getting the body of Christ outside the four walls. And I tell you what, this has been amazing to see how people are responding uh, while this is going on. So anyway, in the midst of all the the, the things that we're seeing on television and and the, and the and the riots and everything else and I just have been heartbroken by I, I watched that partial video again yesterday and just um, to see the, the the injustice that took place there but uh, according to what I've what I've read uh, all the police have been charged uh, they are going to uh, have to go to court and pay for their crimes just like anybody else. So I think I'm hoping and praying that at the end, justice will be served. And, and how many know that, the, write this down, God is a God of justice, God of justice. We serve of a God of justice today, and at the end, everyone has to pay for what they've done, good, bad, or ugly. That's why it's so important for us to understand uh, the, the, the sacrifice that was made for our sins because at the end of the day, every one of us has committed sins, uh, just like that police officer, just like everyone every day falls short. The Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So we need to understand that sin is really the core problem to everything that's happening around us right now. As a matter of fact, if you, the scripture for today is actually found in 1 Peter 1, 18, through 19, 18 and 19. Hey, good morning, uh, Lederic. God bless you. <clears throat> put put in First Peter 1, 18 and 19. And the word of God says this. For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from empty from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And it was not paid with mere gold or silver, which loses their value. It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. You see, the Bible says that blood had to be shed for the remission of sin. Put that down. So just, just so you could understand that blood was shed for the remission of sin. In order to, to wash away and cleanse the sin of people, of the people, uh, basically a lamb was offered up annually on the Day of Atonement for sins to be forgiven for the nation of Israel. So you see, it, 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 the bl blood had to be shed, in, but today we no longer have sacrifices of lambs or, or, or animals or any type of uh, uh, sacrifice of that nature for our sins. You see, Jesus himself suffered and died on the cross and became the ultimate sacrifice. And because of the ultimate sacrifice that Jesus made with his life and he shed his blood, all of us are here today, hallelujah, being able to walk in forgiveness, uh, walking in the blood, in the, in the cleansing blood of Jesus. So we no longer, like, like the scripture says, have, uh, are saved from that empty life we've inherited because unfortunately sin came into being when Adam uh, and Eve 
fell. So you see, we are born in sin. That's why the Bible says that we must be born again. Put that in there. You must be born again. See, and it says, and it says not of the flesh, but of the spirit. And that, and, that, and that born again experience happens because of the blood of Jesus that was shed for every single one of us. So praise God. Now Jesus, here, write this down. Jesus died for me so I could live for him. Jesus died for me so that I could live for him. Amen. Praise God. So, you, so I, I want to go ahead and go on to our prayer emphasis here this morning now. And I, and I was such, I just wanted to kind of create that as a foundation to know that now because of the shed blood of, of Jesus and, the, and, the, and our forgiveness of sins, we can now enter into God's presence. Amen. We can enter into the Holy of Holies. Uh, we are we are uh, the royal priesthood now that have access to God. So it's so important for us to understand that foundational truth about what we believe. Amen. So the first thing we're going to talk about today is this. Put this down. Write down 2 Corinthians 5.17. 2 Corinthians 5.17. Now this, is, this scripture is the foundational scripture for new life for youth. Amen. And it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation or a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. See, that, so our very prayer, first prayer emphasis is this. Begin a good habit today. Write that down. Begin a good habit today. Start something good today. Start something new. Choose to develop the habits of champions. Habits that, that get you to the top of what you want to do. A habit, it may be a spiritual habit that you need to do, or, or maybe you need to read the Bible daily. Uh, maybe you need to pray daily, and maybe tune in to this this gathering that we have here every morning. Just something that you can add, a new habit, a good habit, something that you know you need to do and you need to discipline yourself. Put that down. I need to discipline myself. That's right. But put it down. I need to discipline myself. In other words, you, we need to take uh, and create habits every, every day that we know will help us in whichever way. You know, and most, most people that are uh, uh, that are sports figures, they train every single day to, uh, to, to get their bodies conditioned to be able to play and win the game. Just like that, Christians also have to, we have to condition ourselves and, and of course start new habits and make a new habit so that our lives could be uh, better, better equipped for what's coming ahead. You see, making change, we need to make a change in something that you do every day. See, many of us are doing things every day, but we need to make a little change to that thing so that it will benefit us spiritually as well. You see, you really never change your life until you change something you do daily. Put that down real quick. Make that little note. Uh, change my life. Change something I do daily. See, it's what we do daily. It's those things that, that we continue to do because, see, what we do randomly See, so many times we say, well, yeah, I'm going to pick up the Bible once in a while, or I'm going to read uh, or once in a while, or I'm going to uh, uh, train myself, or maybe I'm just going to go exercise just once in a while. I'm going to do these things just once in a while. Well, the problem with that mentality is, see, what you do randomly dissipates. In other words, if you just do it once in a while, it really had very little effect on our lives. But see, what we do consistently accumulates. Write that down really quick. Really quick, what I do randomly dissipates. What I do consistently accumulates. So when you do something consistently, you do it daily, then it begins to build, it begins to grow on you. So if you just went to the gym once a month and worked out, man, you can I mean you're gonna be sore and you're gonna be hurting the next day. But then if you don't wait, if you wait for a whole nother month before you go again, then nothing will happen. But if you start going to the gym every other day, or you, start, or you start reading your Bible every day, then it will continue to accumulate and build strength on the inside, and the inner man will be strengthened. So today, I want to encourage you to begin a good habit, something that you should be doing every single day that's working towards your goals. Amen? The second thing we're going to talk about, and this is so important, I want you to listen very carefully. Care for your mind. Care for your mind. Philippians 2.5 says this, 
Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. See, you need to understand that your mind is holy and your mind needs to be separated for God's use. So you have to pay attention to it and protect it. Be careful what you let enter into your mind. So you have control. You, you, have, you can actually be in charge of what you allow to enter into your mind. So you have to realize whatever goes into your mind, it can either destroy you or it can, can grow and strengthen you. So you have to be intentional. Put that in. I need to be intentional of what I let into my mind. It's so important that we understand that what goes in comes out. <laughs> I mean, there's an old saying, a, a, a computer saying that says garbage in, garbage out. So if we allow things that come into our life that are not edifying, if we allow things that come into our life that are a hindrance to our spiritual life, then you'll realize that you'll, 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 you'll pay the price because you allow those things in your mind. And what's in your mind eventually is what dictates your life. See, a powerful, a powerful and, and, and strong man like Samson in the Bible, he, he allowed his mind to carelessly drift towards wine, women, and song. And eventually it cost him his life. See, we have to be careful that our mind does not drift off into things that it shouldn't be doing. You see, your mind takes information, good, bad, right, or wrong, and it magnifies it. Put that in. My mind magnifies the information. Hallelujah. My mind magnifies information that comes in. So you have to make sure that the information that you're inputting into your mind is going to make a positive impact in your life. You see, either you control your mind or it will control you. Well, put that down. Either I control my mind or it will control me. See, you, you have the power through the Holy Spirit to be conscious of what's coming in. See, it's so important that you renew and train your mind. Put that, Just put that down if you're taking notes. I need to renew and train my mind. And when you train it and renew it, then the Word of God says that it will work in your favor. Amen. And you'll, you'll, under, you'll, you'll live a much richer life because what's in your mind is what your life will look like. The Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. Amen. So be careful. Care for your mind. Make, understand that it is an entity that needs to be cared for. Amen. And the third thing that we're going to pray for today is this, is to surrender to the Holy Spirit. Put that down. Surrender to the Holy Spirit. First Thessalonians, First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 7 and 8 says this, For God has not called us for impurity, but in holiness. Therefore, whoever disregards this, disregards not man, but God, who gives his Holy Spirit to you. That's 1 Thessalonians 4, 7, and 8. I'm going to read that one more time. For God has not called us for impurity, but in holiness. Therefore, whoever disregards this, disregards not man, but God, who gives his Holy Spirit to you. You see, the Lord desires for us to live in purity. It's a requirement in order to perceive God. In order to see God, we have to live pure. Matthew 5, 8 says this, Blessed is the pure in heart. For they shall see God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. See, so the Holy Spirit is a gift that teaches us God's word and it reveals God's, God to us as well. So you see, if you know anything about God, if God's become a reality in your life, it's because the Holy Spirit has made that reality true to you. Amen. And it's so powerful that the Holy Spirit is the ultimate teacher. So all that we learn about God. Uh, the, the closer we get to God, the closer the Holy Spirit fills us and the closer we get to Him, the more the Holy Spirit will teach us what we need to know about God in order to become that conqueror. You see, surrendering to the Holy, Holy Spirit is so important because when we surrender to the Holy Spirit, He will progressively conform us to the image of God. To the image of Christ, the Bible says. So the Holy Spirit, as you continue to submit to him and surrender to him, then his job is to make you Christ-like. You see, Peter obeyed the Holy Spirit and he preached a powerful message on the day of Pentecost. 
See, God conform, uh, changed his heart and changed his mind. Yes, this is the same Jesus that denied Christ three times. The same Jesus that cut off the ear of the Roman soldier. You see, that same, that same, uh, I'm sorry, not Jesus, the same Peter that was transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit in his life and preached a dynamic, powerful message that launched the church, amen, on the day of Pentecost. You see, God's, write this down. God's not concerned with your giftedness. He is concerned with your godliness. That's right. He, you're, you're, he, God's not impressed with your giftedness because he gave you those gifts. But how you use those gifts, amen, how you use those things convert and equal, praise God, godliness. And that's what God desires through the Holy Spirit that we will live a godly life. Amen. Amen. So praise the Lord. So we're going to pray right now. So wherever you are, just begin to praise the Lord. Just begin to give him glory and honor right now. Just lift up your hands right where you are and begin to bless him. Begin to thank him for his goodness. Begin to thank him for his grace. We thank you, Lord, that this is the day that you've made. We're going to rejoice and we're going to be glad in it this morning. We thank you for this opportunity to gather together, Lord God, in prayer. You said when two or more touch and agree, oh God, that, you'll, that it will be done by my Father in heaven. You said when two or more gather together in my name, that I will be in the midst. That's what you said, oh God. So we know that you're here. And Holy Spirit, we just welcome you right now. We welcome you this morning into our lives, into our hearts, into our minds. Even right now, Lord God, flood us with your presence. Fill us afresh and fill us anew right now, O oh God, that we may put on the mind of Christ this morning, O oh God. And in Jesus' name, Lord God, help us to create good habits, Lord God. Help us, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, to create habits every day that we could that would help us to get closer to you, Lord God, that we would learn to pray more, Lord God, to read your word more, Lord God, to discover who you are, Lord Father, because we know when we discover who you are, we understand who we are, Father God. And in Jesus' name, help us to have the right people surrounding us, Lord God. Make it a habit, Lord God, to put certain people, to make certain phone calls, Lord God, regularly, Lord God, to be edified at this time, especially as we've been isolated, Lord God, because of this coronavirus and all this stuff. Help us to create good habits every day, Lord God, a place that we can gather together with you on a regular basis. So, Father, thank you, Lord Jesus, that you've given us the strength and the power because habits are a gift from you, Lord God. So, Father, thank you, Lord Father, that we can discipline our hearts discipline our minds and discipline our spirits, Father God, that they may, they may submit, Lord God, to you. And Father, help us to be conscious of what we're letting into our minds. Help us to be conscious, Lord Father, not, not to always have just negativity coming in our minds and our thoughts, Father God, not just to allow the media and all the things surrounding us to, to form us, Lord God, to conform our minds, but that we will be transformed by the renewing of our minds through your presence, Father God. So help us to be conscious, Lord God, of what we hear and what we see and, and the music that we allow to come in, Lord God, because all these things make an impact, Father God. And, and we know that our mind is a holy thing. It belongs to you, O oh God. So Lord, help us to become holy and separated unto you by allowing holy things to enter into our minds, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, and we praise you and thank you, Lord God, that you have not spirit, given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind, that our mind will be at peace. You said that our mind, our souls will be at peace. Hallelujah. For, for those whose minds is consistently kept on you, Lord Father. We thank you, Lord Father, in Jesus' name. And Father, I pray right now to help us surrender. Help us surrender to the Holy Spirit, O oh God, to your instructions, to your word, to your presence. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, that today we can surrender to you, Lord Father. So many times we have ways of doing things the way we want to do them, Lord God. But Lord, help us to, to act and to think, Lord God. Being filled, let it all be filtered through your Holy Spirit, Lord God. Let help. 
Father, help us to be obedient, Lord God, to your Holy Spirit. When he when he says to move, when he when he says to to take action, when he says to wait, Lord God, that we would we would be sensitive to your Holy Spirit, Lord God, in this time, Lord Father, in this time of trials and, and challenges and tribulation, Lord God. Help us to be the men and women of God that would surrender ourselves completely to you that you can utilize us, Lord God, as your weapons of warfare, Lord God. You can use us, Father God, to speak your words of truth and, and grace and mercy, O oh God. So we just thank you for the victory this morning, Lord God, as we start good habits, as we care for our mind, as we surrender to your Holy Spirit, Lord God. We thank you for the victory right now that comes Lord God, with those things right now, in the name of Jesus, we praise you for the victory. Hallelujah. Just begin to praise him for the victory right now. Praise his holy name. Thank you, Jesus, for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. Now, right now, uh, if you have your own personal needs that you want to bring before the Lord, then go ahead and bring them to him now. Right now, just begin to lift up your hands. Begin to uh, pray for the things that you have concerns over right now. If you brought a prayer a list with you, uh, a prayer list, then go ahead and pull that list out right now and begin to lay hands on that list. That's right. Lay hands on the list. Every morning we gather together, I encourage uh, everyone to bring uh, a list of the needs that you may have and we could all pray together we can join right now lord we touch and agree to meet every need right now of everyone that's on this line in the name of jesus lord god we thank you lord god for meeting needs there are people who are praying about being depressed uh, there are others that are praying lord god of the, of the pressure that they feel on their lives lord god the burdens that they're carrying right now Lord, I pray right now they will cast their cares upon you, that they will unload their burdens upon you right now, Father God, that they will know that you are big enough and strong enough to carry every burden that we have, Lord God. So right now we just unload the things upon you, Lord God, that are on our hearts, that are on our minds, Lord God. And Father, we're going to stop being anxious and stop worrying about things we're going to trust you for more and believe you for more, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. There are things that we cannot control, Lord God, and for those things, we'll allow you, Father God. We're not going to worry. We, the word, your word says be anxious for nothing, hallelujah, but through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. We'll make our request known unto you, O oh God, and then the peace that surpasses all understanding will guard our hearts and guard our minds through Christ Jesus this morning. So right now, we thank you for those that are being saved, our unsaved loved ones. We thank you for those that are being healed right now in the name of Jesus. It's by your stripes that we were healed, and that's your word, and that's your promise. We thank you for those whose chains are being broken right now in Jesus' name. We thank you for your provision financially and spiritually and emotionally in every way. We thank you that you're still Jehovah Jireh, our provider and we thank you father god this morning for the victory in all the lives of those right now that need to make decisions listen there's some of you that are at a crossroad right now and you have to make some choices you have to make some decisions wait on the lord the bible says wait on the lord they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength hallelujah so just wait on the lord's leading for this decision and then ask for god's wisdom to see it the way he sees it, amen? Because we need to make sure that that decision, that choice that you need to make today has to be a choice that's God-led. Oh, praise God, that God will lead you right now in that decision-making as well, praise the Lord. So hallelujah, amen, hallelujah. That was, that was for somebody that I know is in a place of decision right now, in the valley of decision. Well, just be confident that God will lead you when you wait upon him. Amen. Praise God. Well, you know, I always close with the Psalms. Uh, so I want to uh, go ahead and uh, leave you with this Psalm this morning. Write this Psalm down and throughout the day, you know, read it. I always, I always encourage uh, folks to read this uh, the Psalms during the day 
throughout the time, throughout the day uh, at lunch and, and maybe even even at, at dinner or just you know, if you feel to at a place where you need to just recharge then the you reading a psalm is such a powerful way to do that so psalms 138 write that down psalms 138 is the psalms for today and it says this i will praise you with my whole heart before the gods i will sing praises to you i will worship toward your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth for you have magnified your word above all your name in the day when i cried out you answered me and made me bold with strength in my soul. All the kings of the earth will praise you, O Lord. When they hear the word of words of your mouth, yes, they shall sing of the ways of the Lord. For great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord is on high, yet he regards the lowly. But the proud he knows from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will receive me. You will revive me. You will stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand will save me. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the works of your hands. Hallelujah. What an encouraging word to know that God has us in the palm of his hands. And I believe that God wants to do something great and mighty in your life this morning. And I want to thank you for joining me again. I pray that this was edifying to you. And, and if it was, you know, share it with others. Uh, let them know that I'm coming out at 7 a.m. just for a short time of prayer, just to review some scriptures, just to talk about the word of God, just as a devotional time. And, and, and we need each, each other more now than ever before. So I pray in Jesus' name that you are blessed. And, you know, I just want to pray over you right now and just bless you that today is Monday, the beginning of the week, uh, that you'll start off this week, man, just with, a, with the right mindset, uh, with the right heart. You know, if there's things in your heart that need to be confessed, then confess them to the Lord. Uh, pick up the phone and call somebody. You know, confess your sins. Uh, confess your hurts, uh, confess your concerns to others as well. Find the right prayer partner. So it's not just sharing, it's also praying over those things so that God can give us the right perspective and also release us from some things as well. Amen? Praise God. Heavenly Father, I thank you for my brothers and sisters this morning. Just so grateful for all of them, Lord God, for their for their 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 continuity, their, their 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 dedication and their faithfulness to getting up every morning with me, Lord God, just praying, just seeking you, Father God, no agendas, just to be in your presence. I pray you will bless them, Lord God, and, and give them a great week this week as we launch Monday today, Lord God. Let this be a good day, Lord God, a day full of hope and full of joy. Lord God, in the midst of the madness, in the midst of all this that's going on around us, Father God, that you would take us out of the storm and put us in the eye of the storm where there is calm and there is peace with you, O oh God. So listen, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace this morning. Well, praise God. God bless you. And listen, have a great day and remember this. When you're walking in the spirit, you won't give in to the desires of the flesh. Praise God. This whole day, just walk in the spirit and let the Holy Spirit guide you this morning. Amen? Amen. God bless you. And Lord willing, I'll see you again tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. If you came in a little late and you tuned in a little bit late, listen, as soon as I end this uh, session today, it will be posted on Facebook. Uh, on New Life Outreach, just hit play and watch it from the beginning. I believe God will speak to you this morning. Amen. So God bless you and have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the day and a blessed week. Lord willing, see you tomorrow.